record. <laughs> well, welcome to month eight. Can you believe it? Month we've been in this eight months. We've been talking and growing and refreshing and hydrating, and it's been uh, it's been exciting. It's been fun. It's been a lot. It's a lot of content, man. Going through it all. Are you all caught up on the videos? I don't know. I don't think so. So I, it was cool watching online that people are like, uh, I think Pastor Kelly posted, hey, make sure you get your completion of certificate, your certification of completion. And they're like, well, how do I do that? I'm only at like 36%. <laughs> like, well, you got to get to like 95. <laughs> so there's a lot of videos, a lot of content to go through, and it's all good. Uh, Monday's been pretty good, man. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we've continued a little bit of the Holy Spirit conversation and some, like, really just some practical examples for Sunday morning curriculum and, and illustrating the truth via object, object lessons and stuff. And then um, the big part was uh, making the most out of your facility. So I know each one of us has a different church. And for those of you who will view this later, our church size is different. Like, I don't know what kind of building you have, John, and the building we have is, we have a big building, you know, and so what we can do with our building and what you can do with your building is different. But, uh, you know, uh, just seeking the Lord and how we can maximize the facility use that God's given us. And so that was a pretty cool, you know, examples that they give within that. All right, so let's start off with the question of the day. And uh, I like this question. That was pretty good. So what about your life to this point amazes you the most? What about your life to this point amazes you the most being married nice question brownie points hope your wife used this <laughs> ding there you, go. <laughs> you ever seen that what you ever seen that that uh, what's that guy dr mark something uh, no. he's a marriage guy yeah there you go yeah being married yeah that's awesome man there you go great answer can't go wrong with that dude what? Can't go wrong with that. That's awesome. Good, great answer. I would say honestly, it's probably um, just the 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 affirmation of God that God's been putting in my life right now. Um, ministry is hard, dude, and ministry, like the calling of being a minister, the calling of being a husband, the calling of being a dad, like all of that, and and meshing it all together and trying to balance it all out and still trying to become the best possible version of yourself while you lead your wife and lead your kids and lead your church is, it is, it is exhausting. It's hard. It's, and sometimes man, the enemy's so good at just dropping those little nuggets of you're not good enough here and you're not good enough there and you missed it over there. And man, your kids are hurt. Your kids are really wanting you right now and you're not there for them. And Hey, you know what? You got some volunteers that are talking back to talk. They don't really like what you did. And Oh man. So I would say really, it's like just the, I feel really feel like God's been just placed specific people around me. And I'm just saying, I've got you. Like I believe in you. What, what I got, what I have for your life, you don't even know. And um, I'm Mr. Positive anyways, but yeah. it's easy to become drowned by the negative, even when you're positive. And yeah. so just to hear God just say, I've got you, trust me. It's been, so that's it right there. God's like continual affirmation that he's got this great plan for me. And I don't know what it stores for it, but I look forward to it. So, Yeah. All right, man. Let's do this. Here you go. All right. So the first part of our leadership sequence of kind of growing as a leader was all about making the most out of your facility. So uh, what I want to do real quickly, and then for those of you who watch this later, I would say do the same thing too. It's really a good thing to do. Um, I want you to start and just take a minute, John, for you, Case, and just create a list of all the things. And maybe this is a huge list. Maybe it's the small list. I don't know. Create a list of all the things that you're thankful for concerning your ministry space. Okay, let's just make a list. I'll just make a little list. Just make just a quick list. Shoot like off the cuff. Start writing stuff down. You know what what comes what comes to mind. I could chat the list. Yeah, go for it. You can chat the list. You want to do that? Go ahead, chat the list. I'll write some of my stuff down now. Um, here we go, and I'll I'll say it. Just I see specific. 
um, child aged one. Nice. Let's see. I mean, I'll copy you. <laughs> Till I run out. Let's see. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, ouch. Just hit my leg on the table saw. Let's see here. Um, man. Oh, let's see. Facility, right? Yeah, just facility. Ah. Hmm. Nice. So some of the things we got on here are are pretty awesome. We've got um, nursery rooms, cameras, uh, lobbies for fellowshipping, a kids game room, preschool class, check-in stations, elementary area, games and free service activities, fields for outdoor activities, being able to leave things on the wall. John, that is an awesome one because for the longest time, we have like a school too, and they were like, you, you can you can put it up on Wednesday, but you got to take it down for Thursday. And so, man, none of my rangers could post stuff up. And we had like, we built portable walls that we'd roll in that they could be their ranger wall. Um, Check-in stations, fields. Yeah, man, those are all good stuff. It's just important to be thankful for the stuff that God's given us. And uh, it's easy to look at, it's easy to look at what we don't have. And be like, God, if only we had all of this, we could do this. Instead of looking at, here's what I have given you, and how are you using that? That's pretty good. Um, question next, next question. Have you ever made a plan to have a trusted friend or a kidman leader, maybe another person, to come into your ministry and observe your ministry space with fresh eyes? Have you ever had somebody come in and just... I have had somebody come in. Yeah. Have, um, not during service necessarily. Sort of hard for another children's pastor to come when they're supposed to be doing children's ministry. Um, but one of my friends, we do lunch probably every every ninety days. I'd say he's an older he's been a kid man for like thirty years. I don't know, a long time. Yeah. And um, he was at the national office, and then he. Went back to children's ministry. Now he's working on doing home missions, and he's going to, like, go. My phone just keeps on going off. Uh, Leave me alone. Uh, yeah, so he came in, did a fresh eye, sort of gave me some pointers. And, and so, yeah. Nice, man. We have – I've actually been asked to do that, and I've, I have had that done, and – in fact, I have a kids pastor in Michigan that's supposed to come by and just check our stuff out. And I'm like, hey, listen, whatever you think is awful, whatever you think is great, let us know your wins. You know, recently I heard a pastor um, ask these four questions. And I thought, was, man, I thought it was pretty good. And so the questions were like, what's winning? What's losing? What's missing? And what's confusing? And uh, I thought that was pretty good. I'm a, I'll type that in here for anyone else. So. What? That in yep. What's winning? What's losing? What's missing? What's confusing? 
And so just looking at your ministry and maybe asking those four questions, having somebody else, you know, hey, you know, you observed me today. What are the things you saw that were winning? Like, where are we killing it? You know, hey, what did you see? Like, man, that's just not working. Maybe it was a leader that just doesn't have great energy. Maybe it was um, a security issue that I just, I overlooked and didn't see. Um, what's missing? You know, is it, is it, is it fun? Is it, is it what your pastor has vision for your ministry? Is it what you have vision for your ministry? And what's confusing? What just is like, why are you even doing that? And so I thought it was a great set of questions to ask. Um, cause it really hits the whole area of observ observing, um, your what and why and how it's pretty cool. Um, uh, last question, name one change that you have made or is on your immediate radar to change as a result of maybe what you've been learning these past few months or growing in. Um, or maybe like if you've watched the videos and you're like, man, this is something I need to work on and I got to fix that right now. You got any of that? Do I have anything? Um, right now, what's on our radar, radar screen is preschool ministry. Uh -huh. um, it's just booming. On Easter, we had 24 preschoolers, and it was too small of an environment. Um, so we're really looking at knocking out some walls and expanding that whole wing and making it like a preschool wing. Cool, man. It would be really awesome. Um, but it costs money and we're going to summer, so things are tight. But um, Pastor's going to talk to the council. He wanted to wait till 2020. They said, I don't really feel like we can wait till 2020. We need to right now. So he's going to talk to the council next council meeting, and then we're going to start playing the framework. But we sort of walked, walked down there, looked at it. And yeah. What walls we can knock out. Yeah. And the cool thing is there's like a grass pad right outside. So probably, maybe this will be a part of 2020 vision, but I said, you know, I see like a playground and a fenced-in area, and he went, oh, yeah, that fits. Da, 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 da. Like, yeah. so that's, that's awesome. That. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. So, that's cool, man. That's exciting. So, yeah, so it's exciting. Yeah, super cool. Love it. Cool. Well, here we go. Part of our eight gold sequence that we've been focused on this past month was being the spirit-empowered um, and uh, just a tough – Tough spot, but the Holy Spirit was a gift given to the disciples to help them live for God for the rest of their life. Isn't that what we want for our kids to live for God for the rest of our life? That was David Boyd in this segment. Um, he's got that book that he just released uh, what two years ago, last year, um, all about Holy Spirit and really the Holy Spirit and kids, the Holy Spirit baptism. You know, and so what are some of the pain points that? maybe you've experienced when teaching the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or do you teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I know that's a tough question. question. What? Yeah, I don't know. I don't really. Now that I'm using true fire on Wednesdays, I feel like we've had more of a Holy Spirit emphasis and response yeah. time and um, different things like that. So that's been really good. Um, but I don't, it's a part of response, but it's not necessarily something communicated unless it comes up in the curriculum. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I am right there with you. I actually had this conversation a couple months ago with my other group and, you know, I, I almost left the conversation uh, discouraged but encouraged because man I think about how how often we don't even talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit we got to talk about the Holy Spirit you know and that the, the Holy Spirit is this this gift that everyone has and it, it helps you and he's there for you your comfort it kind of helps you make those decisions and empowers you but the baptism side it's almost like oh yeah that's for camp like it's yeah. not it's it's not for camp it's for everything it's for everyone which actually leads right into the next question. So what do you think, why do you think we see a large number of kids receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at a camp as opposed to during a service on a Sunday? Well, I think it's twofold. Okay. It, maybe not twofold. I don't know why I said twofold. But um, first thing is I think you have time to linger in the altar. Mm. 
But I think lingering and waiting on the baptism of the Holy Spirit is one thing. When you're in a Sunday morning setting or a Wednesday night setting, you're rigid. I mean, you're just, you don't have time. Yeah. And you can edge it. I mean, I even, I think I allow like 10, 15 minutes for response time. That's no time. And I think the atmosphere at camp, your whole focus is wanting more of God, wanting more. You don't have the outside distractions of what's going on at, at home or anything. You're there, right? So your focus is there. Most of the time at camps, you're, you're depleted because you've used a lot of your energy and stuff. Um, Games and activities during the day, and it comes to service time. Most of the time, service time is at night, and you are you're tired. Kids are tired. You're tired. Your 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 psychological thing is, you know, I don't know. God just sets you up to speak to you. Yeah, I would agree absolutely. I think with uh, kids camp, man, we we are. It's almost like we're so intentional about building that into our kids camp experience because you're away, you're kind of retreated. You don't have all of the same distractions. There really isn't a set schedule. So I think you're, you're right on the money when, when you talk about some of those options. I don't, just, I don't think it's just kid men world. I think it's in adult world too. I mean, yeah, I, I, mean yeah. I don't know. I don't know the last time it's happened on a Sunday. So when does it happen on a Sunday, you know, and I think we talked about with our consultant and he's like, oh, well, well, you need to have like a retreat or a weekend to focus on the baptism of the Holy Spirit because, you know, the days of us having most, most churches don't have Sunday nights. This church does. But, um, you know, there's just certain things that, you can respond Sunday night I think in the church world Sunday night was that time when you had that time to it was a core you focused you wanted more of God if you came to Sunday night and you sought after God and you received yeah I think I think cultures change things have changed and most people don't have Sunday nights and just the busyness of life, we're just. So do you do you think? Let me follow up with that question. And would you say that we're missing out? Then are we missing out? I know it's kind of a. Are we missing out? I. I think partly yes. Because I was even thinking, I don't know, last night I was thinking about, we have life group and different things. And I was thinking about how certain things are missed in church life that are not shared, like yeah. service, right? I mean, I, we don't have people get up on a Sunday morning and say, hey, this is what God's happening in my life. This is blah, blah, blah. You know, and I think the saints are missing something, you know, missionaries. That's pretty much when you plug missionaries. I mean, we have missions windows, but typically you plug missionaries for Sunday nights and response times and lingering in the altar. And I don't know. Maybe that's just my southern roots, but it's. Oh, here you go, man. You're you're not you're not off. How? What do you think we can do? I mean, as as kids pastors, what do you? What are some ways that maybe we can prioritize that into our services then? Professional here, yeah, right. Uh, I, I think, think true fire helps for sure. Like it's a I think natural fire, conversation. Sunday mornings, I'm still struggling with it. Honestly, I use high voltage, um, and it's great curriculum, but it's it it's I just haven't made it my own enough to have response. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different crop of kids because most of the time Wednesday is core. Um, yeah, I, I think you just have to be intentional and when you place your response time. Because even on Wednesdays, it's challenging, but like, 
I have um, the way True Fire does it. It's not like the last thing. It's enough margin that you have time to respond. And then you go to your small group or whatever, and then whatever. It's sort of in the middle. Yep. So I allowing that. And then if the Holy Spirit moves, not to be in a rush. Yeah. And just, and just don't rush it for sure. Don't rush it and respond. I mean, let them respond. Like, and it's okay if you don't, you have to be okay if you don't get to the next activity. Right? Because we believe that the Holy Spirit can do in a moment what could take years to do in a, in a child's life or a person's life. Yeah. And praying the other day and, and before service, I really felt like that's what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. You know, I can do in a moment what could take centuries to do, you know. But you got to let me, you got to allow me to do that. It's awesome, man. Super yeah. cool. Great answers. Oh, I love yeah. it. Well, even, even those who watch this later, I would encourage you guys to um, think of other reasons, other ways that, that you can implement if you're not just a conversation, um, maybe with your team. How can we prioritize the Holy Spirit? Because, um, man, that's a gift that everyone has, but just knowing and understanding what the Holy Spirit is in their life. And I, I, honestly, I believe that the sooner a child receives that gift, Man, just the the more capable they'll be sooner. Um, I don't think I received baptism in the Holy Spirit until I was probably 17. But I have a, my youth pastor on our staff. I mean, he says he was baptized in the Holy Spirit at six. And just incredible. Wow. Like he remembers the, like the, the day it happened. It's just, it's just awesome. I'm like, man, dude, you were 10 years ahead of the game. Just <laughs> I'm thinking – you can closer to Jesus twice. Man, just crazy. Just, just, I love it. You know, and it's, it's, uh, I've heard it said before, and I think um, Mark Etzinger said it, and Pastor Kelly Preston said it, and it's, um, and even David Boyd, there's no junior Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit for adults, for kids, for teenagers, and uh, the Holy Spirit is there to help us, equip us, empower us, equip us, and ready us for the kingdom. Um, so, um, if you don't, if you, if it's not a priority, I would encourage you all to make it a priority. Um, cause Jesus is worth it and the kingdom's worth it. I will close off with just one last thing. And that's, uh, illustrating the truth, practical methods of ministry on stage, off a of stage. Tim Shirley said this, nothing replaces the Holy spirit, but I believe that illustrations are a great tool that God gives us to help our kids grasp the principles found in his word. It has been said that 80% of everything that we learn comes through our eyes. If you are not already using illustrations, how can you incorporate something visual into your teaching each week? So if you use high voltage, you're pretty much given visuals, great visuals. They're pretty good at hand delivering visuals. Um, great video content. They keep you pretty engaged. What other type of visuals do you use, John, that's uh, – um, you've used on stage. On stage. Or in a small group, or I don't know, just. I don't know, pretty much all, I pretty much cut and dry. So I run the curriculum to a, almost to a T, not completely, but whatever the prop of the day or whatever visual we have. Yeah. So I don't really. I don't feel like I write my own themes or anything like that, or I might spruce up a little bit, but not, you know, I'm not, I say I'm, I'm not creative. I'm creative. I'm just utilizing the tools and resources that are provided. So I don't have like this major prop. What I like to do though, is, I, is sometimes it's good just to have a familiar thing that the kids are familiar with. So, like, I remember in years past, I would, like, have a rubber chicken, and the rubber chicken would, would you know, tell the rules or, yeah. you know, or just pull out a puppet and, you know. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, like, silly stuff. So. Oh, boy. And sometimes just doing fresh things like that. Um, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if 
doing this, but my son said the other day, Dad, can we do a, a rules video? We did a rules video whenever we did the alien curriculum, and we pretended that we landed and we went over the rules. So just creative things that nice that can be incorporated. Yeah. But whatever. I, I mean, pretty much you can make any any object, any thing, household item. Yeah, that's that's pretty good, man. An object lesson, pretty much. Yeah, for sure. I know that um, some of the things we we like to use, and if I'm if I'm working with any of my big god storytellers, you know, a couple things that I'll always try and tell them is to always have something in your hand. Um, so whether it's a Bible, whether it's not really your phone, but whether it's a Bible, whether it's a book, whether it's a, a piece of rope, whether it's a balloon. Um, something that you can use in the moment to draw attention to. And so I like to use object lessons. You know, I, I believe in trying to bring that wow factor. Um, so, you know, knowing that you use true fire and I use true fire, um, I, I, I like to take what they have provided and how can I make it? Wow. Um, what's cause some of it's good, but uh, I know that some of it can be great. Right. And so what can I do and what can our team do to make it great for our kids? Um, because, man, I really just believe in creating an environment that brings the Bible to life. And it's already the living, breathing word, but how can I bring it to life in the eyes of a child? How can we turn God's word into the storybook right before them? And so for one week, we actually, um, a couple of months ago, it was Jonah. We were in a Jonah series. Yep. I bought a giant shark suit. I'm behind. What? You bought a what? A giant fish suit like that you get into. It's like a blow up. It's got the fans in it. Yeah. And so we interviewed the fish that swallowed Jonah. Right. And so it was totally different, totally off script. We pretty much changed the whole storyline. But I thought, man, you know what? Who's ever interviewed the fish? Like, we all want to talk to Jonah. I don't want to talk to Jonah. I want to talk to the fish. How did the fish feel when God told them to go swallow this guy? You know, so that's how, that's how it started, you know? And so we, we, we brought the fish out on stage and, and I'm actually in the fish shoot with a mic on and I'm like, well, hello there. How's it going? Well, one day I was just minding my own business, looking for some food when the Lord spoke to me, you know, and we just talked about, you know, and I thought it was silly that, you know, like even the fish know to obey God when God tells you to do something, but Jonah didn't. And so it was just a, it was a cool visual that, drew the kids in and really solidified the message we gotta listen to the lord and so man what are some ways uh, do you know what you're talking about next week already what i'm not talking i'm on break oh okay sweet yeah we're, we're starting the new um we're doing adam and eve for high voltage so we're starting animals nice sweet leading up to our um our next big day, which is a family fun fest, we're going to have a petting zoo. So I sort of tied my curriculum with the petting zoo. So like, we're going to have like, talk about animals and I'm going to encourage their, their the kids to invite their friends to the petting zoo. Which are, which Love is it. That's awesome. Sweet, man. Snakes. snakes. I love snakes. You're going to bring some snakes in and showcase them? We're celebrating on Wednesday for True Fire, so we're actually just having a pizza party this week and water. And I for the remember and celebrate? Uh, we're going to use some elements. This is the first time. We're not doing a lot. Yeah. I turned that into a big game Sunday. And so yeah. I took... We're just going to do water games. Mm, and sweet. Uh, Jealous. Water games and pizza, and that's it. And I made... Well, I, I delegated to my team and said, I have two young adults that are just passionate about kid men and let it be a safe, safe place for them to learn and grow. So I said, hey, I want you all to plan this from start to finish. And I gave it to them last Wednesday night and said, here you go, go. I said, I want to know, schedule by Monday and what we're going to do. And they just texted me. Like, okay, sounds good. Way to go, man. Build the kingdom, one disciple at a time. Love it. 
Uh, you know, actually, that goes to my next question is really, you know, do you know anybody that could possibly help you pull some props and illustrations together? But you are already doing it, man. You are delegating authority and, and really casting the vision and the dream, the dreaming of how to create the wow factor to other people. We once a month have a chapel team meeting and we get together and just dream up the next six weeks and we plan it out. So we take the, we take the what, like, what are we talking about? Take the who we're talking about. Um, we talk, we take the why we're talking about it and then we build it out. And so, so then the who and the why, yeah, the, who, the, what we're talking about. So the ponder point, who we're talking about, the character of the story, the why we're talking about it. What's the focus? So like, what's our, what's, what's the, where's the direction we're going? Why are we talking about this today? And then we get together and we dream up. We just, we talk about small groups. Is it, is it what we want to do? We talk about um, object lessons. How can we capitalize on bringing the wow factor that Sunday? Um, we talk about transitions. How, what's our connect question look like? What can we do differently than just getting up there and, all right, it's the connect question of the day. You know, how can we make it more fun and engaging? Because, um, again, we want to create an experience a child will never forget. And so part of creating that experience a child will never forget is being intentional from start to finish the 60 minutes or 90 minutes that you have with those kids every single week because it's, it goes quick and then they're no longer your kid. They're now in youth group. So well, man, that's, that is pretty much all that we have gone through it all. Um, other kids, pastors, I hope that, uh, that you are also considering the wow factor in your ministries. And as God's called all of us to be kids, pastors, it's a, it's a privilege. It's a joy. It's exciting. It's not easy, but it's absolutely worth it. And um, the wow factor, that's right, John. And so that's, um, that's it. Well, hey, let's pray, and then we'll call it a day. Call it a day. Anyone pray for you, John? We're good. Let's just pray. Come on. All right, well, Jesus, thank you so much for John. Thank you, Lord, for the other kids, pastors that are part of this Hydra group. And we pray, God, as we continue to grow ourselves and, Lord, just push ourselves as leader, we just know that as the leader grows, God, the organization grows, the, the team grows, the kids grow. Father, we just seek you and your presence, Lord, for the ministries that you've placed upon us. And uh, we don't take it for granted. We take it seriously. And uh, we ask, God, you'd help us to be focused, help us to be clear in our vision, and uh, help us to be great producers of disciples within our ministries and Lord just uh, bless us this month as it's DBS month and kids camps and summer plannings God and there's so much paperwork and to-do list to accomplish that we would be able to get it all that volunteers would just be excited to be there and that it would be literally our best summer ever so Lord we give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus name amen well hey God bless you my friend all right yeah hey message me your phone number And in this thing? Oh, okay. Sweet. I, I emailed you. What? I already emailed you it, but I'll... Oh, did you? Oh, I missed it. Okay. Excellent. All right, dude. Sounds good, man. Well, hey, God bless you, dude.